Hello guys, how are you? This is the build of Revel uh, 1150 Royal Swedish ship Vasa. Um, a very, very fun and good kit to build. Um, as you can see, beautiful, beautiful um, art, box art of a beautiful ship with a very interesting story. Uh, unfortunately, it sailed less than a nautical mile, but it was a beauty per se. It was one of the world's wonders. Its ship was. It was very beautiful indeed. Um, I really, really enjoyed this build. I actually thought it would be a uh, smaller scale, smaller size uh, ship. And when I realized its size, uh, as you can see here, I was amazed and uh, yep, it really, yes, I was really happy with the size of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I enjoyed thoroughly building it and filming it. And um, yeah, let's see how it's uh, built, how I built it and um, you guys be the judge of it. I used was uh, wood blocks instead of the plastic ones. I just used a few, uh, a small fraction of the plastic blocks that it brings. I used wood blocks. I used uh, at scale um, proper uh, boat uh, rope. Okay, that I have here. I didn't use the, the, the given thread for it, and I did some cloth sails again. Uh, if you can. If you want to see how I do my uh, sail cloths, or cloth sails, sorry, you can press on the card on the upper right corner, please. After cutting and uh, cleaning the pieces, I did some dry fitting and I was amazed. It fitted like a glove, it fitted real well, guys. And so uh, after priming individual pieces, because as you know, working on boats, I like on ships, I like to work on sub-assemblies. I just primed and prepared the paints according to the instructions in order to paint the hull, the interior part of the ship and the deck. Now, uh, as usual, I can tell you that most of the paints I used were from Revell, Vallejo and Revell actually, but the, the, the assigned paints, I used them all, I used it all. And I like Revell, uh, Revell paints. Uh, I know that some of you guys have some problems with it. I really like Revell paints. All you have to do is thin it with a bit of alcohol, for instance, and at the right consistency you airbrushed it perfectly. The only thing you have to be careful is on each application please clean thoroughly your airbrush and I know that this is a lot of work but these paints are very good. They create a membrane, a very thick and, and smooth membrane on the model when painted. But that same membrane is going to cloth a bit your airbrush if you don't clean it so please be careful. That's the only 
thing I am against Ravel paints, but either way, for me, they work fine. This paint that you see here labeled G Golf is made of 80% wood brown silky mat plus 20% of brown silky mat. Can you check that other um, non-linear marbled paint on the other hole? That will actually help us more ahead. painted some other parts and some other pieces on the sprue. Uh, I only have to uh, paint uh, when I cut that those pieces out, uh, that small plastic dot um, product of me cutting the piece. So that's the only thing I have to do and I worked as you know on sub-assemblies.
Now let's start and uh, do some detail painting on this hole. And now we start on the detail painting. Um, I, it wasn't this step that I found out that probably I would, I had take a bit more than I could, but um, well, it turned out all right. Um, I really enjoyed painting this, all these details. Um, it was a pain in the butt because the instructions are white, uh, black and white. And I had to um, turn to a lot of pictures of the Vasa, um, mainly the one-tenth model that it's uh, on display on the Stockholm uh, Museum, Vasa Museum. And it wasn't easy, I can tell you that. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. It was the most long detail painting I've ever did and one of the part of the builds that took longer time to uh, be finished because I had to stop in the middle and do something and then I took a deep breath, okay, let's detail just a bit more and then I got tired of it and then I went to another thing and then I got back to detail painting. So um, yeah, it was an interesting process. process I can tell you that I was constantly um, correcting some incorrections because when I checked the, the photo uh, I saw that I was overpainted a part that, by on blue that actually was green and then I would go with a little bit of green on top and I I spent actually almost the whole build process until the masts uh, just correcting here and there and I even bought some uh, acrylic markers which I will talk about it uh, at due time um, 
just to um, detail painting and to make sure that the paint was consistent, uh, full coverage was visible and at the real color without any kind of uh, uh, dark tone or clear tone exactly as it was. Now I stopped a bit on detailing, concentrated on the deck and I don't like to advertise because sometimes people use my videos uh, without permission to do some um, advertising and I, I, well, I have my own opinion about that but, but this AK wash, wood wash, really made the difference. I applied it on the hull, on the deck, on the masts and it really made the difference. It gave that dirty brownish texture uh, of the wood and uh, the wood uh, ship, uh, the hull would be. So this was a simple way to advance on the build and at the same time to enhance the build. statues of this ship which on the real ship are close or are even 700 um, if someone from Sweden or someone that knows can correct me I believe they are 700 uh, depictions and statues uh, well a lot of detail to paint This gold color that I'm using, it's from Vallejo and it's called Glorious Gold and it is glorious indeed. For me, one of the best gold colors there is. If you want to go with these pictures, with these statues, with this detail, Vallejo is totally the way to go. They are amazing paints, fantastic paints. The coverage is perfect and this gold color is called Glorious Gold and I couldn't pick a better name to paint this lion of King Gustavus than Glorious Gold.
now a black identity pen uh, just to um, mark each each nail each rivet uh, that unifies the whole um, I thought it would be an interesting uh, contrast and uh, it really paid off uh, it was a very tedious uh, work but it really paid off see the valve of the Vasa um, all painted all detailed painted uh, after this I gave it a coat of clear varnish to protect the paint and applied uh, a wash a black wash even because some on some spaces it was black underneath and the brush didn't couldn't get there without ruining the rest of the paint so a wash was the ideal for it Now the deck and I can tell you that all I used was no, not those oils that I usually do uh, use. I just painted it with a deck tan and just used that AK wash after protecting the paint obviously and it turned out beautifully. just uh, moist with um, white spirit not wet just a tiny bit of uh, white spirit and uh, don't be hard on it just clean it softly
and this is the stern of the ship. Um, you can ask why am I painting individually each piece before gluing the whole hull and then paint it, checking if there is any gaps. Well, I dry fit it several times and on this kit it just fitted perfectly. So I was feeling confident that if I painted each piece individually that I won't, wouldn't lost any detail. I had my doubts on the towers and the minarets, uh, let's call it, of the vaza, but then it turned out beautifully also. And after the base of the ship, we will proceed to the beautiful stern of the ship. Um, as I was painting this stern, I was searching for detail, uh, watching some pictures, and I even watched some documentaries about the Vasa. And it really has an interesting story. Uh, yes, it sank. Yes, before you guys start joking with it, it sank less than a nautical mile. But this ship has a lesson. Um, it, it really has a lesson. If there's something that the subjects learned is that the king must always be obeyed. And the fact that the shipbuilder, two shipbuilders, because one died in between, the fact that two shipbuilders maintained the king satisfied and be, was able to build and continue building the ship, even with the requests and the exotic requests of the king, is per se a testament to their ingenuity because back then there wasn't any mathematical simulators to see if the ship has some buoyancy and it was remarkable the fact that this ship even sailed is a testament to the ingenuity of the shipbuilders and this ship was really beautiful big and beautiful and it was unfortunate that it had sank with the gust of wind and the fact that the lower decks were open and the water became entered through there but this ship has such an interesting story that if you guys checked it you would be amazed with it Placing the cannons on the hull before gluing both halves. Um, what I found out was, and, and until this point I was following instructions, uh, it is very difficult to say in the instructions that you can fit the cannons when then you have to operate uh, both hulls. Even with a rotating table, there are some cannons that are going to get out of their place. So, as I was touching a cannon and that cannon just started oscill oscill oscillating and I said, no, 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 I'm removing those who are not, uh, who don't have much glue in it because I don't use too much glue. And um, I removed 80% of the cannons. And then at the end of the build, I, I just placed it there again. This is what I wanted to talk about with 
you. Um, I bought two black liners from um, Molotov. Uh, they are acrylic paint. So these uh, black liners, pen, let's call this, um, are actually acrylic paint. And better than a wash, when you already have the effect that you want on the hull, if you just go through the, that crevasse between the tails and everything is turning black and clean, that will give you a better shade on the detail. Also, uh, those markers um, acryl are acrylic paint, uh, have acrylic paint on the interior. You, they are half transparent. You can see the level of paint that you have. And if the tip of that marker goes dry, you can buy another. Uh, you can buy another tip and point and uh, adapt it on the marker. Also, you never throw that marker away because that marker can be refilled. So, I bought these um, just to um, enhance the detail of the stern. But I have to uh, please be careful with this. You always give before a matte coat because the roughness of the surface will make the paint adhere. Or you can paint directly without any kind of varnish. And when working on these conditions, you work on your own risk, okay? I didn't, I didn't give any um, varnish, but I was taking the risk of some paint flowing through a place that it shouldn't be and I turned out I could ruin all that detail paint so be careful when using these. These are useful but be careful. I use a toothpick guys um, I know on the video would be more beautiful if I used a zero 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 pointed brush but I am comfortable with a pointy toothpick yeah it's a toothpick <laughs>
perfect fit. I was worried for nothing. I was constantly looking at um, pictures from the Vaza and sometimes when there are a lot of detail like this you forget and cannot see some things so uh, that's one of the things that I'm doing here. These um, narrow windows are yellow. One of the things I took into consideration is that if I am giving a wash and giving some texture to the hull, to the deck, uh, I will have to do the same also with every single piece that stands out on the ship. Because if something is texturized and weathered, uh, another one is not going to be brand new like a toy. At least the same kind of texture. So this is what I'm doing. I'm giving a wash to every piece that uh, stands out on the hull and on the ship. some small pieces had to be uh, hand brushed uh, and for that I used uh, Vallejo colors.
is finally done. I finally could concentrate myself on the masts, uh, making uh, the cloth sails, because um, I was going to replace the vac form ones uh, with cloth ones and all the rigging process. as the rest of the kit were amazing they just snap fitted perfectly I just had to uh, put a bit of uh, liquid glue on it in order to uh, make sure but overall they fitted perfectly As you can see by now, I chose the plastic red lights. And why? Well, they were thin, graceful, without a tiny bit of flash, very, very well fitted, and I really thought I should use these. Uh, if I could make the, this on, uh, on thread, yes, I could. If I no, if I think that this is um, that was necessary, no, not at all. Uh, these red lines were very good. I know that on rope they would be different, but I was having fun on this one. Uh, this one really, really was going well, and I really wanted to see also how this fitted, and everything fitted perfectly. So. I am sorry, I really like the way the ship is with the plastic red lines. No pun intended, but it's my build as you can understand.
see these plastic blocks? I replaced those uh, with wood and metal uh, blocks. I just used three or four from plastic. My hand is shaking here because uh, this is not easy at this scale and also because the camera just messes with the movements. I mean, I want to show you everything but I cannot show you everything because it will be very difficult to do all that with the camera just on front of you. Now all these uh, small 
rolled robes that I did serve to um, you see these lost threads here from the rigging they disguised it very well and that's the truth and now the cloth sails you already know how I made it uh, it's on a video if you want to check it out and uh, let's place these Now guys, uh, for those who of you who are still watching, uh, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to say that the last sail on the bowsprit, I, the, the lower one, I didn't place it. Because uh, when showing the ship, this glorious ship, all rigged and all um, made, I wanted you to look at the bow just like it is, okay? So I placed the sail after finished finishing the, 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 the film, okay, the, the footage. So I know that still there are still guys that are going to comment, oh, you, you missed that sail. No, I don't miss that sail. I just wanted you to show and to see all the lion and all the work I did on the bow. I just wanted to uh, say that this ship was a surprise for me. It was really fun to build uh, a good project. Again, uh, the red lines, they're plastic. I am not sorry for that. I really like the way the ship looks, even with those. Also, um, if you like this video, uh, consider helping me on Patreon. Um, I am only trying to make my hobby uh, sustainable. That's just my purpose on uh, going there. And if you like this video, please uh, subscribe. Also click on that notification bell if you want to, just uh, for if I get a video out, you could uh, be notified of it. Despite all this, uh, this kit was really, really fun to build. I really, really enjoyed this one. And having said this, it's done. Uh, it was a pleasure to work on this one. If you are still watching this video, thank you very much. I'm sorry for the long video. As always, I wanted to show the whole process. And here it is the Revell 150th scale Royal Swedish Vasa. A beautiful ship. My respects goes to the Swedish people and salutations from Portugal. As always guys, as always, keep modeling, keep modeling, always with a smile.